Hi, this is Val from Hi Who, where we look back at games from the past and see how they hold up to current industry standards and trends. Today we look at Company of Heroes, a World War II based, fast paced action real time strategy game made by Relic Entertainment in 2006. Relic is a game developer that specializes in making RTS games such as the Homeworld series and the Warhammer 40k Dawn of War series. RTS games were quite popular, but have been replaced by MOBAs such as Dota 2, Born from Warcraft 3, a Blizzard RTS, and the hugely popular League of Legends made by Riot Games. Cubby Heroes has met with wide critical acclaim and won multiple awards, but this game came out 10 years ago. So when compared to modern mechanics, level design and story, how does it hold up 11 years on? The game holds its own and was a pleasure to play. The single player missions were quite long and challenging. I found it hard to find faults with this game, and I believe it would be an enjoyable experience for fans of RTS games and those who enjoy MOBAs. In the single player campaign, the player commands two US military units during the Battle of Normandy and the Allied Liberation of France. These units being the 29th Infantry Division, Able Company and the 101st Airborne Division, Fox Company. The players put in command of some of the major American operations during the Battle of Normandy up until the defeat of the 7th Army. In terms of mechanics, economy is quite important to RTS games. In classic RTS, such as StarCraft or Age of Empires, players need to devote a lot of time to this component to fund their game. In Company of Heroes, however, this has been integrated into the action. You gain resources by controlling strategic points in the map, similar to Warhammer 40k Dawn of War. However, in Company of Heroes, each point will either give you manpower, ammo, or fuel. Each of these points have different values associated with them, so you as a player will need to prioritize high yield points. In order to get these resources, they need to be connected to your base by controlling the land in between, creating an opportunity to cut off enemy supply lines by capturing points behind their front line. These resources can be used to train troops, use abilities such as throwing grenades, and upgrade units such as getting a flamethrower for your engineers. So in order to support your production, you need to expand, which means tactics like turtling up, making a massive fuck off army, and attack moving across a map won't work. This brings me to the units. It is standard in RTS games to have units that are strong against certain units and weak against others, such as pikemen from Age of Empires 2 being strong against cavalry and being countered by archers. In Company of Heroes this mechanic has turned up quite a lot, with some units doing immense damage to some units while being completely negated by others. This means that players need to have a well-rounded army that can adapt to the situations that are being presented to them. Each side has a wide variety of troops available to them, from basic infantry, to light vehicles, to heavy cavalry, and specialized armor such as the Tiger and Pershing tanks. This is further influenced by the command tree. Each army has three different trees that will influence their playstyle and can counter enemy movements in different ways. As you play you earn experience points that can be used to get the special abilities from these command trees, such as off map artillery support or calling in a strafing run from the air force. The tactics a player can employ are quite varied and require quick decision making. For example, an MG squad can pin down infantry so they can't move. You would need to attack this with a tank or an armored car, but what happens when it's paired with an anti-tank gun? A player would need to distract it with a unit in high cover while flanking around the sides, maybe throw a grenade at it, or use a mortar tin to clear the area, or an artillery strike, maybe a sniper could get the job done, or you could just ignore it completely and go around. These decisions need to be made fast and can result in you losing a significant amount of men if you make the wrong call. This also expands the positioning of units. There is cover in the world that will help your infantry stay alive, the troops have rangers and arcs of fire that limit their use, most weapon teams need to be packed up before moving and set back up to commence firing, when engaging tanks it's best to hit them from the back or the side to do more damage. Similarly moving a tank to face an attacker can potentially change the outcome of the engagement. Sidelines and the fog of war are a bit weird, as you can see a circle around the units regardless of what's around them. Meaning your troops have x-ray vision, must be that super soldier program. I would have preferred to have line of sight that adapted to the environment so I couldn't see what my troops on the ground couldn't see, as it does in Company of Heroes 2. Unlike many other RTS games, Company of Heroes isn't really a technology race. There are some upgrades available to you, but they are situational and may apply only to one unit. For example, upgrading an engineer team to have mine sweeping capabilities is not necessarily on the maps, and only if your opposition is using mines. A comparison can be drawn to the build items in LoL, making items to counteract what your opponent is doing. This reinforces the action orientation of the game, and pushes you to advance, as clever tactics in army mixes are more important than technology. The graphics in the game are really good, everything looks great from the units to the explosions. The cutscenes are a little bit dated, but what do you expect from an 11 year old game? There is a dynamic environment that will change and be scarred by the 
the war, as well as weather cycles that were introduced in the expansion. If you destroy a tank, it will sit there on the battlefield and provide cover for your infantry. And if you call in an artillery strike, craters will be made, again providing cover. I found it strange, however, that you couldn't take cover behind certain walls and tanks that were alive. Buildings also collapse and bridges can be destroyed and remade, dramatically changing the options available to the player. Sound design was excellent and really aids in the tension. The explosion sounded as if they were going off in my room and the soldiers screaming at me really added a bit of realism to a genre that is a bit devoid of that in my opinion. Each of the single player missions is presented to you with a briefing that covers the map, potential strong points and tactics that you could employ. The missions stay away from the standard kill all the things objectives that are common in RTS games and are set up more how I would expect an actual military mission would be, with main and secondary objectives such as capturing a road and holding it or defending a position from a counter attack. Briefings also include opposition strong points and other helpful information. I found the campaign missions difficult to lose, sometimes it would be difficult to move ahead, but I never really felt that I was being pushed back or my base was threatened. The enemy seems content to sit back and wait for me to come at them, apart from those few defend the point missions which were my favourite. This may have been my difficulty setting as I played in moderate to facilitate a quick playthrough for the purposes of this review. In skirmish mode the AI is thankfully a bit more aggressive, which is good as there is limited multiplayer options due to low populations. The Company of Heroes Complete Pack, which includes the game's expansions, is available on Steam for about $40, and I think you should wait for it to go on sale. It was on sale a few weeks ago on Humble Bundle for a dollar. This is a great game and definitely worth a play. This has been Val reviewing Company of Heroes for Hi Who. Let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for watching.